What up? It's the rap throwback. Boy, Diz Megatron in the house here with Soundwave on the line. What's up, man? We're live from uh, Moonbase One. That's right. How you guys doing, man? How's the week gone? We're good, man. We're good. The the week has been good. A little crazy, but <clears throat> it's been good. Yeah. Just chilling, trying to avoid the COVID shit. Trying to avoid the Rona. Trying to avoid the Rona. Yeah, man. Had a. I was exposed. I guess. I mean, say that. You exposed twice in the last seven days. Running uh, rampant. Then. Negative. You tested. I'm negative. So. Oh yeah. yeah. Do they stick and, the uh, thing up your so, nose. Well, I just uh, I I got an at home test, so they're. Oh, all right. It's better than w- waiting to make an appointment and. Yeah. All that shit. So. I got one, did it, tested negative, got one more test to take on Sunday before I go back to work, and yeah. I'm still negative, I should be good to go. Right but, on. Uh, yeah, man, we got a trip planned at the end of the week, so I have to come up negative, otherwise I'm screwed, I'm not ready to go. Yeah, they don't let you travel anymore. Uh-uh. Crazy! So, other than that, man, just chilling, watching some football, and just same old shit, man. How about you? Yeah, man, same old shit. Work. Watch the first week of football is in the books. Second yeah. one just started. It's all right. Yeah. Weird season so far with the, you know, Fitzy being out for the Redskins. That's too bad. Yeah, that was a bummer. I hated yeah. seeing that. But uh, the whole NFC West is undefeated. The AFC West is undefeated. I mean, it's one game, but these guys are going right. to clash. So, yeah, man. Who uh, do the Raiders have next? The Steelers. Ooh. So we got to travel to Pittsburgh. It's going to be tough. Yeah, and then we have Jacksonville, and I don't know if we're playing that game in Florida or not. I don't know. Huh. I, yeah, I, I think it's in Denver. Is it? Yeah. No, next week is in Denver. Oh, really? Uh, we got two away games to start. Oh, okay. We come back on third third game. But I thought maybe because of the hurricanes or something, something was going on in Florida, but maybe I'm thinking New Orleans. Probably New Orleans. Yeah. Florida's safe. So, yeah. That's oh, yeah. That. Nothing too exciting oh, yeah, nothing on the too news crazy, front man. either. No, not really. No. Uh, saw that Rick Ross got his license, his driver's license, finally for the first time in his life. Oh, yeah, I saw that he gave a wing stop to his 16-year-old son. <laughs> well, we'll see how that goes. Kind of funny. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I see. That was kind of funny. I see no error in this logic. Jeez. That's pretty funny, though. Um, yeah, I'm sure it ain't nothing to Rick Ross. So he's got like a hundred cars. Is that true? But he's got a lot, man. I remember seeing his parking lot with the, the cars. I didn't see a hundred, but he definitely saw like ten of them. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, I I honestly don't know, but I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. I don't think that guy has got any issues with money. No. Yeah, that's how boring the headlines have been this week, really. I saw nothing of interest. Um, yeah, it was I cool to see Ice I Cube, saw... though, on, on Monday Night Football. You know, him and Oh, I didn't see him. No. Yeah. That's badass. Yeah, I saw, I saw Cube there what? anyways. I didn't get a chance to see Too Short. Nice. He was up there. Yeah, with, I didn't uh, get a chance to bros. follow too closely until um, I like the fourth quarter. I was yeah. kind of paying attention to it. Uh, but yeah, that was a crazy game, dude. That fourth quarter and the overtime was fucking nuts, man. I know, dude. It sucked. I thought we lost it like twice. <laughs> I was like, we're fucked. <laughs> yeah, man. That, that, so did the Raven fans. So, I mean, don't. Don't forget that. They were on that roller coaster with you. I know. 
fucking roller coaster, man. Jeez. John Gruden, he's like, I felt like I was a cat with multiple lives. <laughs> I don't like sense. playing like that. <laughs> no, but I mean, you got the win. Yeah. Let's see, that's probably the you best Monday out, night football them. game that we're going to see this year, and it already happened. But you well, we had that crazy one on Thursday, Thursday night, and then uh, now Monday night. So yeah, yeah. It set true. the bar up pretty high. Yeah, it was a good week. It was a fun week of football, at least. Yeah. So, anyways, nothing much else over here to report. We got uh, MC8 Section 8 up in the house today. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, it came out in 1999. Rap was still pretty good. You know? In yeah, 99. rap was really good, man. Yeah. And uh, MC8 changed labels, correct? Uh, Yeah, I think this is his uh, first Who Bangin' record. He had Did another, he have more than one? He's got another one. I think In My Neighborhood it's called. Oh. So, I did not realize that. I'm not sure which one came out first. But um, we can probably find out, of course. Looks like uh, 2000 and My Neighborhood came out. Oh, okay. So that one came out after. Gotcha. Yeah, that was interesting. Players, right? okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm just taking a quick glance at it. And producers are mostly the same, minus Aunt Banks. And- yeah. I don't see any Binky Mac on here either, but um, well, that's cool. Yeah, he had a good run here on Who Bangin' Records. So, uh, uh, you know, we uh, know MC8 came out of CM Dub. You know, probably the most right. famous guy from CM Dub. Compton's most wanted. Did a yeah. I think he had like three records before he came to Who Bangin'. Um, there's the We Come Strapped. Death Threats, and then uh, the one where he's... Last Man Standing. Yeah, Last Man Standing. There we go. That one was produced mostly by DJ Slip, but it did have a, a DJ Muggs and Daz Dillinger beat on there. And oh, nice. You can't find that on Spotify or anywhere. It sucks. Last Man Standing, you can't? Uh-uh. I had the CD, too, back in the day. Oh, wow. Yeah, I remember this cover. It's yeah. crazy. He had a single off Man, that. So... The one that Daz produced, he made that his hit single. Hit the Ground, I think it's called. I don't even hit remember what it sounds like. Hit the Floor. Yeah. For some reason, oh, man, I kind of remember this one, but I don't know. I, I honestly can't think of what it sounds like off the top of my head, but it sounds very familiar. Yeah. So I think the first time that MC8 was put on the radar was probably from the DJ Quick diss. I, th- I mean, I probably heard MC8 every now and then somewhere on a soundtrack or something. But um, yeah. he, he wasn't really a household name necessarily. Um, so I wasn't like a big fan, you know, at first. Back then, I, I'd listen, and I was like, yeah, I don't know. This guy's not my thing. Yeah, um, it was hard to get into MC8. Something about the voice and the flow just, I don't know. For some reason, it just didn't stand out to me. The producers, too, that he had weren't, like, doing that many beats that were in our playlists or anything. Like, I'm talking chill and, and slip here. Right. Um, right, right. They didn't really cross over too much into the other stuff that we listened to. Yeah. So, you know, we kind of looked at eight from a distance for a, a long time. And I think when he hit hoop banging, I mean, I bought that last man standing record and I was mildly impressed. I liked a few of the tracks enough to like check him out on well, I feel like, like and, yeah you like, listen to uh you listen to MC8 a decent amount before this came out cuz I feel like yeah last man like standing is the one that I bought and uh, on your radar before that came out yeah that last man standing record is where I really started to get into some 8 like I'm like okay I I, I could dig this you know um 
And of course he had his cameos with like Spice One. Yeah. And all that good stuff. Uh after that last man standing, he did move to Who Bangin', right? Yes. Okay, I'm just gonna pull up the wiki here so I don't try and do this off the top of my head. My memory ain't what it used to be, apparently. <laughs> They say we get older and wiser, but we just forget more shit. More <laughs> shit, man. Okay, so Last Man Standing in 97 and then Section 8 in 99. Hmm. I think I bought Section 8 up in Longmont at the disc jockey in the mall, if I remember nice. correctly. Um, I don't remember if we had death threats. For some reason, I want to say yes, but I just didn't like it that much. I'd have to listen to it. I I haven't heard that album since, to tell you the truth, since back in the day. I, I definitely know I saw that cover in your collection, but okay. I don't know how often we listen to it. So I didn't like Death Threats necessarily, and that's probably what kind of was like, eh, MCA, I don't know. One, I mean, cool name, right. cool covers, I don't know. He's got so he's got he had that cool collaboration with Spice One, um, which kept him respectable at least. And you know this is early on in in uh, our hip hop journey here, so eight yeah, wasn't the guy I that think... we just like liked immediately. But no, he had to grow on us. Yeah, he had for to sure. grow on us for or, sure. I mean, definitely me. I mean, I'll be honest. I never really gave him a fair shot. I hadn't listened to an MC8 from beginning to end uh, until we did Section 8. Um, I just would listen to the shit here and there, the features, stuff like that, but he yeah. just never really uh, just never really uh, hit the radar like that, I guess. I listened to We Come Strapped, his first album. I gave that a spin, and uh, it's kind of cool. It's It's really old school, of course. You know, 1994. But it's interesting. It's worth a listen. I might give yeah. it another listen and pick some faves or something. We'll see. Is, is we come strapped the one where he's got the eight ball in front of him at, on the pool table? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I've heard some of that on Spotify, just on, uh, you know, how it'll suggest things to listen to after your album's over or something like that. Yeah. Just randomly pick something for you. So I, I did kind of browse that album, but I didn't really give it a great listen. But. Yeah. I mean, he's been around doing his thing for a while. Definitely uh, in Compton and on the rap scene, right? You he's know? always involved, um, right? Yeah. I feel like even, you know, with the NWA days, they might not have been out there, but. Uh, pretty damn close. Well, MC Big Ren gave him a shout out. Do right? you remember that? Yeah, he did, right? Yeah. So let's see. So 8 didn't drop a solo until the early 90s, but CMW was out doing their thing, right? Yeah, they were out before eight solo records. So CMW, it's the Compton thing. Looks like that dropped in the 1990. Oh, so, yeah, yeah he's, he's been out there, I guess, just as long as NWA, pretty much. Yeah, it says that his years active were 1989 to present time. Um, you know, he is now finally age 50. But, wow. uh, yeah, it's crazy. I mean, his latest records, I like those. Those, are, those sound pretty good. They don't really get enough spin for me. But uh, to me, he's one of those rappers I got better with age. For some reason, yep. it might just be his producers too. Who knows? But yeah, sometimes it takes a while. Uh, I I know that some of the turnoff back in the day were production for sure. At least for me, you yeah. know, like the beats just weren't banging. Then it was kind of like, well, I'm gonna move on to the next one. Um, yeah, but eight now, you know, I don't know for whatever reason now, you know, the dope beats aren't as hard to come by. 
for these guys and it's easier to collaborate with these guys. You don't have to travel across the country to go to some studio. You just email a couple of files and hey man, right. come get on my record. Yeah. Or hit me with the beat. So good shit, man. Yeah, good shit. Makes the move to uh who banging and that was a smart move, I think. Uh Mac Ten gave him some dope shit to work with some producers and he was in the right place there. Yeah. I think. So it was a good move for sure. Why don't we just check it out got the me record. interested anyways. Yeah. Same here. All right. Let's get this started then. Sounds like a plan. All right. So the first song living in the streets, interesting beat kind of a, a throwback to Dr. Dre's ghetto boy. From the chronic. Oh, okay. Get to nice. Yeah. yeah, um, I felt like it was a solid start to the album. Yeah. You know. Um, I like it as a the first track because that's exactly what it sounds like. It's like the beginning. Yeah. Of yeah. uh you know, gosh, I, I, I kind of lost my train of thought there, but I was gonna say that the the way that the whole record started though, with that intro with the, yeah. all those violent gunshots and whatever i wasn't expecting something so like smooth or uh, low right. key but if you if you take the intro out though like yeah. to me it makes sense that this is the first song without having known that that intro was right before it yeah yeah that's a cool track man the but anyways i yeah i i like this is a standout track for me yeah yeah, it's a cool track, man. I like the way he flips up those words that, uh, you know, what you going to do when you grow up. But I think it's what he's saying is what you going to throw up, you know, like growing up in the CPT. It's interesting. It's pretty cool, though. It's a good start. You're right. So then the track after that, then we got uh, My Life Here. Another uh, smooth track. Kind of laid back. Old school. Yeah, um, what I really like about my life is obviously the samples, you know, yeah. um, sunshine sample. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's some of the smoothest, violent gangster shit that you're ever going to hear. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, it's it's really a cool track to just cruise to and chill. I mean, even though it's still pretty violent, but it's good. Nothing too crazy, but it's just about life in Compton for eight, you know? He does yeah, a pretty, pretty much. good picture. The... You know, he's all right at, at the storytelling. You know, he's not really known for it. But uh, the way he writes and stuff, he's he's a storyteller in his own right. Yeah, he does a good job of doing a, you know, a, describing what it was like for him in, in Compton. Yeah. You know, I feel like, you know, my life is exactly what he's rapping about. Yeah. But I like it. So then we got Murder at Night. Hype-ass beat by yeah. Sir Ant Banks. I think Ant Banks is yeah. at his best it's... here, and MC8's at his best here. This track stands out the most to me on yeah. the album. Um. I mean, the production is obviously different than the rest of the album just because it is Ant Banks. Yeah, that's but, true. Um, it's an element from Ant Banks that we don't hear very often. So it was like a really dark beat. And I think uh, MCA killed the hook. Yeah, and, he did. He know, had fun with that hook. He had the Easy E reference in there. Yeah. Um, that was another plus. And, uh, yeah, man, it's good shit. He he murdered it, man. Like you had said earlier, it's a ten. Yeah, man, this is a this is a great uh, Compton anthem right here, man. They should be proud. Dope beat. So, murder at night. Next track, then caution. Gia. Yeah, this this beat was funky, man. <laughs> That's two shots. Yeah, Gia. Yeah, so, so uh, I haven't heard anything from DJ Bird before, but. I do like this. Yeah, me neither. He's not like a household name, 
And I'm kind of surprised because the beat is, it feels like un, like it's ahead of its time a little bit. Because I've heard like people like the Neptunes or the Black Eyed Peas kind of go venture off into this weird mechanical-like yeah. sound. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I'm surprised we haven't heard more from this guy. I'm curious to know if he has anything else. You know, I I don't know. I could be wrong. But Bird just didn't I, uh, didn't ring a bell with me as a household name. Like I don't know Bird. You know, yeah, his alias could have changed too. Who know? knows? But I think that MC8's flow on this track is dope. Um, it's one of those flows that are, or one of those beats that just kind of catered to eight's flow, which is really a little unorthodox. Kind of like a more refined Silk the Shocker. I've heard, you know, I've heard people say that Silk the Shocker is just like a poor man's eight or something like that. I don't think that does eight any <laughs> justice. <laughs> no, I don't think it does uh, any definitely justice. not. <laughs> That's fucked up. <laughs> That's an insult. MC8 like that, it's fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll move on then. Next track. It's just a skit, the getaway, you know, whatever. We'll skip that. Automatic, though. Red Wreck, Julio G. This is one of the standout tracks, in my opinion. Yeah, and I think this one stands out the same way that uh, Murder at Night does. You know, like, for whatever reason, those two beats, the, the way that they're produced. Yeah. Kind of like, um, just kind of step out from the rest. Dude, they got. But it uh, is Julio G and Fred Wreck. Oh, I know. Like, it'd be hard to come up with a shitty beat with them guys, man. And it's crazy that those guys collaborated. Do they collaborate much? And I don't know of them collaborating before this. And, Interesting. You know, I don't know if they do collab a lot. I'm interested. I want to hear more. Yeah, like this track right here uh, is great. It's great. Um, I don't know. I I feel like you could almost plug in any rapper on this beat and it would have been dope. But the way MC eight used it anyways, and did the hook and everything is perfect for him, man. He killed it. So props to him. Yeah, he did. Props to the producers. It's a good track. I'd give that one a 10 for sure. Like that's a 10. Yeah, this one's a 10. And uh, he tells a cool story, you know, and then he ends up getting busted at the end. Yeah, you know, eight does paint a picture. He does his. He, he's well respected for his storytelling. Not really known for it, but everybody knows that's kind of how eight rolls. You know, he's a uh, he's kind of this uh, a good writer. You know, and he just never runs out of gangsterism rhymes either. Jeez. No. All right, good track, good track. Then next track, strawberries and cream. So. We agreed that this is the low point, you know, things yeah. start to, you know, things start to show cracks. We're seeing the cracks on this record. Kind of starting out with this track. It's underwhelming. The hook is kind of boring. It's all kind of boring. Yeah. Um, this was definitely the low point of the album for me. Yeah. Um, there just isn't a lot to, to say, you know, like, the beat's average, and the lyrics are, are. I mean, this performance. Who's this? It's that CMW guy, huh? No, nah, that's eight. This is all MC8, is isn't it? Oh, this one does feature CMW. Yeah, okay. So now you're right. There is a other rappers on this track, and that probably doesn't do it any um, favors. No, I was going to say, they just didn't really deliver on, on the track. But no. Yeah, it's the low point. I'd skip this one. Yeah. It's all like right, the lowest so score. Scarberries and Cream, low score for sure. We'll move on to Flatline. I think it picks up a little bit here, even though the producer is still DJ Slip. You know, he gets a little right. bit of redemption here. Um, It still refuses to... Really pick DJ up Ross hard. Steel, right? Oh, is it Ross Steel? Yeah. Slip is on the next one. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. 
Ross Steele was on Strawberries and Cream and Flatline. Yeah. So here Ross Steele gets to gets another shot at it. And I think the beat's better than Strawberries and Cream. Um and MC eight's better on it as well. It's a it's a chill yeah, track, you know, this, you know? It's uniquely chill. It's it's cool. I like I don't know how you would describe that sound, but it's dope. Yeah, it's it's cool. It's kind of old school. Something about it, man. It's got some soul in it or something. It's so simple and chill and yeah. yeah. It's got some good bounce to it for sure. Yeah, so yeah, I give that a thumbs up. A pretty good score. We'll move on to the next track then. Days of 89. So we got DJ Slip here. So you know, I think Days of 89 was close to being good and it was also close to being bad. <laughs> it's yeah. just kind of like right there like I don't I can't really I don't know, like I won't skip it. I won't skip the track. It's kind of smooth. It's a good bridge. But I can I can uh, deal with it. You know. What what do you think about it? Um for me it's kind of like strawberries and cream or like it's chill and I like chill tracks. I want to like them. Um, but for whatever reason, they're just not hitting the mark for me. Yeah. Um, I'm not exactly sure, you know, like this one, the hook is pretty simple and he is, you know, kind of singing a little bit, but something about this is just a miss for me. Yeah. Needs a little energy boost. Yeah. I could see that, man. Go on to the next track, then we got the hood still got me under. So, right now, we've got like three songs well, almost three songs in a row. We're like in this little slump right. of the record, right? Right, from Strawberries and Cream. Yeah, we had Flatline, which was a standout track, but the other's been pretty chill. Yeah, I like this track probably more than you do. Um. I like his flow on it. I like the hook a lot. The hook carries it, and they kind of let the beat right out at the end. It's one of my standouts. What do you think about it? I mean, I like the sample. Um, you know, it's a classic track. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. For some reason, MC8 slower songs aren't hitting the mark for me. Yeah. But yeah, I do like the, the, the I do like the sample and the idea of the song. I like the hood still got me under, you know, it's the yeah. play on the original title. So like I get all that, but for whatever reason it just doesn't hit the mark with me. Mm. Next track, Me and My Bitch. What'd you think of the, about this track? I liked Me and My Bitch. Um I like the way he flipped his beat too, you know, earlier, I think I said Biggie and Ja Rule flipped this one too. I don't know where the original sample comes from. Um, but yeah, I like this track technique. It was cool to hear him on here. He kind of changed his flow up from what I was used to hearing. So yeah, I dig it. I gave it a, I gave it an eight man. Yeah. Yeah. I dig it. And it, it is cool to hear technique every now and then you kind of forget that he, uh, you know, has a pretty decent contribution to the LBC sound. You yeah. know, those LBC rappers like Swoop G, they got they got their own flavor, man. Little C style. Yeah, Swoop G, yeah, the LBC crew, yeah. I mean, the, they're like one of the first groups out there out of the LBC, and it's cool to still hear them doing their thing here, Yeah, you know, in 99. All right. Then the next track here, the hood three, the hood way. You know, I think the beat's cool. Uh, oh, good man. for eight getting some big names on here. I don't. I think we we talked about how you know Mac Ten and Eight didn't seem didn't sound like they were on their A plus game here with Ice Cube, who's like always on his A plus game. But yeah, uh, like what, what were your takeaways kinda... from it? I think it's a great track, um, but, you know, MC8 and Mac-10, like you said, they didn't 
they didn't buff themselves for the track. Yeah. Um, which is fine. It's still a good track, but the potential for it to be a 10 was there. And yeah. I feel uh, like, I mean, their verses are still good. And the song is still great, but. Um, and to be I fair, it's hard eight. to it match a great track. Cube, you know, verse for verse. Yeah. The average MC exactly. can't do it. But, um, I mean, these guys aren't really average. They're likely Hall of Famers, I would think. If there was a rap. Yeah, I game. would think so. Yeah, I'd, I, I'd feel comfy if they made it. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't have any issues with any of them going in. Yeah. And you could totally hear that 98 Cube vibe in here with the yay, yay, you know, that war and peace yep. flow. In that, and the uh, beat is mind. like uh, based on a true story vibe. Yeah, it's a uh, it's definitely one of those who banging sounding beats, man. So yeah, it's good stuff. Those late man. '90s were really good for Mac Ten and Ice Cube. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Then the last track here, "Thicker Than Water." Um, you know, we think we're getting like a slow track here, which we kind of are. But it's like another right. laid back track. But this one's got the surprise, you know, on it from the hook. Yeah. From, uh, Val. What are your thoughts on this? Yeah, um, not a bad way to end the album. You know, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Put the slow track at the end and, you know, it's not necessarily as, as gangster as the tracks before it. Yeah. But, uh. You get the nice surprise with Val Young on there that kind of gives you that old school, like early 90s death row vibe or even mid 90s. Yeah, it does but, give uh, you that West Coast, I, you know, that golden era of the West Coast yeah. vibe, which, of course, death row can be attributed to for sure. So, so I do like the track. Yeah, and this is only separated from, you know, the golden era of West Coast by like a few years. So right. I'm not even sure I appreciated her appearance back then when I first heard it, <laughs> you know, but now in yeah, 2021, I, it's like, damn, that takes me back. Yeah. Well, our time's passed and we're able to see history play itself out from there. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, man, definitely one of the, uh, best vocals you could get on for a hook. Yeah. Back so then. yeah. Props to eight for getting her on there. Definitely boost the score on uh, that track for sure. So, you know, running through all these tracks, mm-hmm. MCA Section 8, 1999. Which are your uh, three standouts? Ooh, three standouts. Um, let me see here. For sure, Murder at Night. Um, I'm going to go... Three, the Hoodway, and Automatic. I mean, those got to be the three top standout tracks for me. Yeah. So my three standout tracks, I think, is Murder at Night, Automatic, and I think I'll just be different and give it to The Hood Still Got Me Under since I scored it that high. I think the crown jewel, though, is going to be Murder at Night or Automatic. I'm going to give it to Murder at Night. Nice. Um, What do you think? I think the crown jewel, man, I'm going to agree with you. That's what I had in my notes was Murder at Night. But, I mean, no knock on Automatic. You know, that track is just as good. Yeah. Um, Just a huge fan of it is a great Banks track. Music and it was cool to hear Eight and Aunt Banks on a track together. Yeah, I think that Aunt Banks doing it kind of pushes it a little over. Like, because Aunt Banks is the man. Right. So that's dope, man. Um, hey, I was curious how many tracks did you give a 10 to? Uh, the Hood Got Me Under and Murder at Night. Oh, damn, nice. I gave Automatic a nine, but listening to it, it was close. But I just couldn't, 
I couldn't say that I liked Automatic as much as Murder at Night. The, but the hood got me under. I scored it higher than Automatic, which is weird. I don't know. I'm all over the place, dude. <laughs> yeah. Well, I had Murder at Night, Caution, and Automatic with pens. Dude, Caution is a dope track. Yeah. That's one of my standouts, too. If I could give it a fourth one. Because I gave Caution a nine. Nice. It's a great track. So, you know, this being all in all, man, uh, think... you know, first who banging effort. What'd you think all in all here? Um, you know, MC8, I think, you know, overall, he has a great album on his hands here. I would even go as far as calling it, you know, a must have. Um, MC8, you know, I gave him, I gave him a solid eight, man. That's what I gave him. Yeah. And uh, he's got a lot of classics on here. I gave three tracks a 10, um, you know, and there's definitely some other good tracks aside from that. But uh, yeah. I like it, man. I enjoyed bumping it. I got to know MC8 uh, a lot better, uh, more in tune with his lyrics now. And I was pleasantly surprised to hear how violent he was. <laughs> no. It was cool listening to the album. It was dope. Yeah. And I don't listen to a lot of MC8. He's just never an artist that was on my radar. And, um, you know, having to do this podcast was cool. It opened my eyes to some good shit, man. Yeah, I thought it was time to get some 8 up in there, man. And uh, I think it'd be cool to check out his older record, his first record at some point, you know? Um, yeah. I gave it an 8 also. I'm going to give it eight. This is going to blow your mind, but I'm going to give it eight Gia's. That's right. <laughs> Nobody saw that coming. Gia. And I don't know how many times he said Gia, but I can't help it. Every time he does it, I want to do it too. Gia. Gia. Yeah. It is contagious. <laughs> yeah. You know, eight's a pioneer. I'm happy that he's still doing shit in the game. Uh, his latest records are real good too. Um, and I just think yeah, he's yeah. one of those guys that got better with time. And, uh, you know, at first I didn't, I wasn't a fan, but uh, he grew on me for sure. And it's not that he was whack or anything. It's just that, geez, like how we said that the game was so saturated mm -hmm. with dope shit back then that, you know, we had, we were spoiled enough to be able to like, um, just ignore a lot of good shit back then. It's crazy. Right. But, um. Eight's always been doing his thing, man. He's always been doing his thing. He's always been in the background there, involved with Ruthless, Death Row, all these little stories and shit. Cypress Hill, man, it's crazy. Lynch, Lynch Mob, yeah. I mean, yeah. like, think about, I mean, he's, he's touched a lot of great, um, you know, what you would call um, historical acts in rap. You know, he's yeah. got to work with a lot of them and be a part of a lot of it, or at least be behind the scenes of it. So. Yeah, he's, man. A little bit more of a West Coast staple than most people realize. Yeah, it's fun to read about all uh, you know the shit that he did back then, in the early days, with all these rappers and you know just that inside baseball of uh, like that started Death Row and you know right. his beef with Quick, um, how he got started in a movie and voicing things like in Grand Theft Auto, real inside baseball shit but hey he's cool man he's all right section eight man like you said i think uh i think people should give it a listen you know pop it in their playlist whatever snag the cd because it's got some classics on here that you should definitely have up in your playlist so yeah i mean if you're a fan of the uh ruthless death row tree you know mm -hmm. or um you know even the, the West Side Connection stuff, you know, we're going to get all of that shit in touch me. So yeah, this is where it, it's dope. Who Bangin' was shining this year around this time. They had some dope artists, and uh, this is just one of those projects that came from, you know, that camp. And, uh, yeah, I doubt it went platinum, but it's a dope record. He peaked at number five on the hip-hop for uh, R&B and hip hop albums, and that's pretty good. It does not 
say what he went. But I he, bet he went gold. He hit number five. Yeah. He's, he's got an interview where he's got some plaques behind him, and he's got a picture of this album there, so he probably got a plaque for gold. I would imagine. Yeah, for sure gold. I think I'm, I'm sure he hit gold. Yeah. But yeah, let's go ahead and uh, sand it off. All right, hit us up, rapthrowback.com. Check out our YouTube channel. We are getting subscribers, and that helps. Uh, we'll get some more shit up. Uh, you know, check out our Spotify, SoundCloud, iTunes, whatever. We always doing these things straight out of Cybertron, boy. So, oh yeah, I think we out this bitch, man. Sounds good, man. Good album, man. Good shit. Oh yeah. Nice one to throw back. Your boy Megatron signing out. Soundwave out. Peace. Peace.